Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. It is a amazing Sunday in Northern California. It is gorgeous outside and I've had a very nice relaxing day so far and I'm film filming some videos for you. Trying to get all that in one sentence turned into a big blah. Um, so I hope you guys are doing very, very well. So what am I coming to you with today? Gotta stay on topic because I got a lot of books to tell you about. Um, I am coming with basically the biggest book haul I've ever done. So big that I have to separate it into two videos. And that is because I collected a lot of books while I was traveling and I've been buying a lot of books and I have a lot of stuff I want to tell you guys all about. Now, part one, which is coming today, um, is going to be all books that I've got uh, while I was in New York or at Book Expo America, but all of these books are out. So they're all published and ready for you to pick up. Um, the next video will be everything that I've purchased elsewhere and everything that I just want to tell you about that is on my shelf and get into your guys' hands. So that will be um, next Sunday. You'll get that video. So one week, lots of time, lots of books. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you get organized. Get ready to write some of these titles down. Also, you know, support your independent bookstore, get your library to purchase these books and uh, read them from there because I think all of these are worth picking up if I do say so myself. So I'm going to get started with probably the one that I was most excited about in New York, and that is because I got to meet who I feel personally is a, an icon of American letters, and that was Tony Kushner. This is a copy of both of his plays for that are called Angels in America, and Tony Kushner was at Book Expo America signing copies of this, and I got a copy signed for both myself and my husband, and um, it was magical. Tony Kushner was am amazing. He talked to me just like he knew me my whole entire life. And um, I was I was very awestruck. Now, Angels in America won, I believe it won the Pulitzer. It won the Tony for Best Play when it was on originally. And it just won the Tony for Best Revival. So if you get a chance to see this in any production where you live, I highly recommend it. This play deals with the AIDS epidemic. It deals with being gay in America in a certain time period. It deals with family. It deals with relationships. It deals with mental health. Um, there is certain magical realism aspects. It deals with American history. Um, it is sheer and utter brilliance. And it is phenomenal. Um, and I highly recommend just reading it and really dissecting it if that is something you guys are into. Um, and yeah, so this is Angels in America by Tony Kushner, and I am super excited to have met him and got this copy. Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about has been, I know, I don't know if you guys have been hearing about it, but I've heard a lot of really, really good buzz about There There by Tommy Orange. And excuse me, I got to meet Tommy Orange as well at Book Expo America and have him sign my copy. And he is a local Californian, so this was super, super exciting. Not only that, this book is um, own voice Native American, which we don't get a lot of those novels out there. And it is a debut novel that packs quite a punch. Um, from what I understand, this is the story of 12 people who meet at the big Oakland powwow, and they are there, and their stories and their lives intertwine. Um, a couple of things of note. Um, I saw a, an interview where someone asked him about the women characters in this book. Supposedly, there are a lot of really strong fierce women in this book. And he said that he was raised by strong, fierce women. So he felt it was really important to represent them in his novel. Um, everyone I know that has heard or read or talked about this book has said nothing but great things. So this is There There by Tommy Orange. This is published by Knopf. Thank you so much for the copy. Thank you very much for meeting and saying hi to me, Tommy. You were fantastic. And I think everyone should try to get this one on their list. I think it's worth a read. The next book is actually even special in a different way because my friend Jesse Chappie, who wrote Florence and Ecstasy, which you guys know I love, and I had breakfast, and she brought me a copy of Tradition by Brendan Kiley. Brendan is actually Jesse Chaffee's husband, and this is his fourth YA novel. And I went searching for this book and I could not find it. So again, Tradition by Brendan Cayley. This is published by McElderry Books. I'm ha I have a hard time saying that word and I don't know why. This is the story of two kids at a private prep school that are on the outskirts. They don't feel that they belong. One girl is 
um, she just feels like she's on the outside. She's picked on a lot. And the boy is on a hockey scholarship and financially wouldn't go to the school on his own if it wasn't for the scholarship. They develop a relationship and it comes down to them having to deal with what is going on with uh, in this school, the ugly sexist history and the way that the school is run. And what do they do? Do they stay quiet or do they come forward? What decisions do they make? Um, I've heard nothing but great things as I was, I, I don't know if I said it exactly, but I went searching for this book in San Jose. Everywhere I went, it was sold out. So I know people are reading it. And that's Tradition by Brendan Kiley. And this is again out by McElder Books. I'm going to go through a section now of independent publishers. And all of these sound so good. And I really support independent publishers. You guys know I'm a huge fan. And the first one I want to tell you is about is Little Beasts uh, by Julie Demers, translated from the French by Rhonda Mullins. And this is out by Coach House Books. And when I met the people at Coach House, they were just amazing. They were just lovely people. This is the story of an 11 year old girl who lives in, outside of Quebec. Um, and it's a retelling of a fairy tale type story where her mother is very depressed and sad and her father has left because the 11 year old girl has grown a beard. And the mother has to protect the little girl from the town because they think something's wrong. They are on edge because of this. What does this mean? Who is this little girl? Um, it's a short little book. It doesn't have much to it, but I hear it's very lyrical. And um, I'm super excited to read Little Beasts by Julie Demers. And this is, again, translated from the French by Rhonda Mullins, published by Coach House Books. Yeah. And then I got introduced to a publisher that I didn't know a ton about but now is so on my radar, and their name is Rare Bird Books, or Rare Bird, and they um, first caught me with this novel, which is The Bellman by Heidi Barnes, and this is the story of Stanley, and Stanley's first job is in an inn in coastal Maine, and it's like a historical inn, and this is really about all of those people, those weird people that come to the inn, all of those eccentric people that work at the inn, and then also there's the story of Mindy a girl that Stanley is falling for. However, Mindy never gets to see Stanley when he's trying to impress her. He only seems to, she only seems to see him when he's falling flat on his face. Um, I started the first few pages of this. It just sounds so um, endearing. And I know I think that there's a sequel to this actually that I'm going to try to get my hands on too. So again, this is The Bellman by Heidi Barnes and this is out by Rare Bird. And then the next one is even just another cool story and that is because the author is actually co-owner of book passage which is a bookstore in corda madera which i go to all the time i saw sarah wyman there i saw chloe benjamin there and that is through the bookstore window by bill petricoli and this is the story of Gina. Gina runs a bookstore in San Francisco, and but she's never able to really shake the past. She escaped, I want to make sure I say this right, her harrowing escape from the war in the Balkans years earlier remains fresh in her mind. And what, has hap what happens in this novel is that she um, hears that someone is alive that she didn't think survived. And so she's going to go hunting for him or her, and that is sort of what a catalyst that starts a cycle of events that brings the past and the future together. Um, and Bill was very nice. I met him in person as well, and I really enjoyed him. And the book just sounds interesting. How do you beat anything that's set in a bookstore? I don't think you can. The next book I'm putting out there, and I just want to say, if Eric of Lonesome Reader, if you are watching, or Kendra Winchester, um, you guys may want to get this book on your radar, because this is Companions by Christina Heselholt, translated from the Danish by Paul Russell Garrett. Um, and you may guys have already have heard of this, but this is sort of an homage to The Waves by um, Virginia Woolf. This is the story of a group of friends, and what we do is we get these interior monologues telling us about their lives and as their lives develop through a longer time period, I believe, than the waves, but I think it's sort of that same sort of their interior monologues get us into who they are and where they're going and the choices that they're making. Um, I The critics' reviews inside it are amazing, and this is out by 
Fitzcarraldo editions, which they published The Doll's Alphabet, which is a short story collection I absolutely loved. And I'm super excited to get into The Companions by Christina Hazelholt, translated from the Danish by uh, Paul Russell Garrett. The next book, actually, either John or Noah over at Green Apple Books brought to my attention, but this is from Transit Books, which is local to me in here in Oakland, and this is um, Blue Self-Portrait by no Naomi Lefebvre, uh, translated by Sophie Lewis. I'm going to put her name up there because I did not say that right. This is the story of a woman who is on an airplane. She is flying from Berlin to Germany, and she's sort of ruminating on this famous um, Austrian? Austrian composer, but, and his self-portrait. And then that leads her to think about a German-American composer that she had a relationship with. And this book is basically that flight and those thoughts. Um, I've heard it's very um, uh, internal, and the prose are very long and very flowy sentences, but it's really about this woman's mind and this relationship. Um, and I've heard nothing but great things. So, Blue Self-Portrait by no Naomi Lefbriv and out by Transit Book, translated from the French by Sophie Lewis. Okay. Now, I told you that I was sneaking in one book that um, hasn't come out yet. It actually comes out on the 19th, which is two days from the day that this video will post. So I think that that is pretty safe to talk about when Katie Met Cassidy by Camilla Perry. Camilla Perry wrote The Assistance, which was a big book a couple of years ago. And this book I've heard called one of the great lesbian love stories. So this is the story of Katie. Katie is from Kentucky. She comes from a conservative background and she's moved to New York City um, and her relationship with her fiance has failed. And one day she's sitting across the table negotiating with Cassidy. Cassidy is a self-affirmed, self-possessed um, woman in a business suit, just looks put together. And when they meet each other, there's that automatic sort of connection. And this is the story of how their lives intertwine and how they change each other. Um, and I've heard that this is great. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book. So if you're looking for that le lesbian love story that you've been really searching for, maybe it will be When Katie Met Cassidy by Camilla Perry. And this is published by Putnam. And you guys know how much I love Putnam. Now, the last two I'm going to sneak in here are actually YA novels. And both of them sound just great. And this is Hello Universe by Erin um, and Trotta Kelly. And this is published by Green Willow. And I'm just going to sort of buzz it the way that it was buzzed to me when it was, uh, I was talking to the author. And she said it's four kids, one prank, one guinea pig. And what happens thereafter? Are these kids brought together by coincidence or are they brought in together by fate? Um, I think it sounds endearing. The, I love the cover. I think the cover is just adorable. Anything with a guinea pig in it just sounds adorable. So that's Hello Universe by Aaron and Trotta Kelly, published by Green Willow. And it was also a John Newberry Medal Award winner. So there you go. There you go. Last but not least in this video, I'm going to tell you about Sam and Lisa's Last Hurrah by Rachel Cohen and David Leviathan. Now, I went to see David because he actually has a new book coming out. Um, the third in the series, the one that started with Every Day, Someday, and I can't remember the first one. Hold on, maybe I can figure it out. Another day, maybe? Um, I can't remember. But um, this book is the story of twins, Sam and Lisa, so that they host these dinners for their friends at their grandmother's house. And as a last hurrah before they graduate from high school, they're going to host one last dinner. Each twin is going to invite three guests, but they're not going to tell the other twin who those guests are, and the twins will not know who they are until they arrive. As you can imagine, that's going to cause drama. So I think that sounds really fun, and it sounds going to be like it could be a really interesting read. So that's Sam and Lisa's Last Hurrah by Rachel Cohen and David Leviathan, and this is also published by Knopf. So that is the first part of a humongous book haul. I hope you guys are excited about all these titles. Have you heard of any of them? Read of any of them? Which ones sound most exciting to you? Please let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I hope you like what you saw. And until next time, happy reading. Next Sunday, part two. Talk to you later. Bye.